I'm Summer from Bella Canvas, and today's video is about how to create a t-shirt design from nothing. We've teamed up with Printful to show you the entire process from concept to design to printing the final result on a t-shirt. So we're here with Ed. He's the head designer of Printful, a print-on-demand drop shipping platform. Ed, can you give us an idea of some of the services you guys offer? Yeah, so basically what we do is design for any and all brands. Um, if you have a clothing brand or you need your logo revamped, we basically help you transition from your sketches to realization. So today we really want to give our viewers an idea of everything that goes on in the design process. So let's, let's say you want to get something designed. Yeah. Um, basically, the first thing I would ask you is, um, do you have any sources of inspiration? What kinds of brands or images are you inspired by or feel that I should be inspired by when I'm going through the design process? You would come up with some kind of mood board for me and we would kind of go from there. So I have this dragonfly tattoo and I thought it would be cool to use that as inspiration for this t-shirt line. Okay, great. So let's have a look at some images and see what we can put together for you. I use Pinterest a lot. Are there any other places that you tell your uh, customers to look? Uh, I basically, I like to find out what kind of brands my customers are into. Mm -hmm. So if there's a particular brand that you really like or want to sort of emulate or kind of just think is really inspiring, yeah, we'll kind of go from there. I found some really cool kind of variations of the dragonfly. I really like this kind of like abstract kind of sketch version. Okay. And then I found some really cool like watercolor interpretations, um, but I'm not really sure which one I'd want to go with or which would make the best t-shirt okay. design. So, so I think typically when you don't really know what style you want to go for, um, what I'll do is I'll just give you some more iterations of the mm -hmm. design and then we can kind of get honed in after I've got some initial sketches for you. Okay, cool. Okay. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Great. So in this case, I kind of went through a couple of stages already of kind of sketching things out. And then I went ahead and I transferred it here so you can kind of see some of the line work already laid out. The reason it's like that is, is because I've already done some of the prelim preliminary work before I started to go ahead and ink these things. But you know, the, the beautiful part about fixing this, these things up afterwards is, um, you know, with the use of Photoshop, you know your way around it, you can kind of fix anything. And I kind of like the, you know, the, the sort of handmade feel to things. Um, but, you know, that also really ultimately depends on what kind of project it is and what the client wants. Let's go over some of your sketches now that I've kind of put some stuff together here for you. So I kind of tried to, you know, take everything you, you said into consideration. So. Um, we've got some watercolor pieces here, we've got some really minimal detail, we've got some really high detail stuff here, which uh, I personally am a fan of. I know you didn't really ask for, for this, um, but I thought I'd include it anyways, just because I really like the look. I love um, it. Oh my gosh. What are your thoughts? Wow, there's so many cool ones to choose from. How long would these designs take? Like, for example, this one versus this one here. Well, so something like this, um, it took me probably 20 minutes to figure out. Yeah. Um, something like this would take me probably closer to three hours, a little above that. But you know, it's not really so much about what the final yeah. product is, you know looks like. It's uh -huh. really about the process, right? Yeah. So I didn't just arrive here. Mm -hmm. I sort of started sketching all of these things out, and then I came to some of the more rendered, more finalized designs. Um, to take us to the next stage, which would be preparing it for print. Definitely like the color now that I'm looking at it over the abstract one. So I am kind of leaning towards this sure. detail one, which I did not expect um, to you know, see something like that, but yep. I love it. And then this one is a really kind of good mix of that abstract, but sure. with the watercolor mixed in there. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, we can go ahead and we can pair both of them for print. So the next thing we're gonna do with these designs is we're gonna scan them in and prepare them for printing. Um, so I've got here my flatbed scanner and I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, scan these things in. Okay, so now that I've got my digital file, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull it into Photoshop and uh, prepare it for print. Yeah, so, so what I'm doing here is um, I'm basically just trying to darken my, my shadows as much as I can. Um, because what I'm going to do next is I'm going to remove it from the paper so that um, it prints as nice and sharply as it can be. So some of these really soft edges that I did while I was watercoloring need to be kind of darkened up at the moment so that we can start to kind of mess with them and, and separate them out from that background that I don't need. Um, so I'm just using my burn tool here to kind of 
do that and emphasize some of these edges so I can pull them out. Okay, and then what's cool about working with, with two different um, mediums here is that I can kind of go back over it and it's really forgiving in that way. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add some highlights just because I want this thing to really pop. And because this process is really forgiving once you've, you know, um, digitized the piece, um, you have the ability to kind of try a bunch of different things out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this and if I don't like it, I might change it up. I might change the colors or the background or whatever the client might want. I kind of like the way that um, making sure all of my edges were solid and making sure that all of the new stuff that I added was solid so that when it prints, um, there are no printing issues. Uh, the printers don't, they don't pick up transparencies very well, so you kind of want to try and avoid those. So in this case, that's why I took this watercolor piece and I kind of put a solid background on it because I know it's going to print the best that way. That's pretty much it. And uh, we can go ahead and print this thing now. So earlier I was working on this watercolor piece, um, but I decided that uh, I really want to make it pop. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to basically recreate it uh, digitally. So I'm going to go ahead and recreate all of this line work and get it as clean as I can get so that I can have a nice, really sharp print. All right, so now we've got both designs ready to go and we're gonna go ahead and print them. So I'm ready to pick out my shirts. Uh, obviously, gonna go with Bella Canvas. You have the 3001 and the 3413, so uh, solid or tri-blend. Um, I prefer tri-blends, do you have a preference? I, I think it really depends on what kind of look you're going for. I think if you're trying to have that sort of vintage feel um, and a really soft shirt, then I think certainly the, uh, the tri-blend works cool. really well for that. And I like that you guys um, are able to DTG on tri-blends, so that's a pretty cool offering. Yeah. All right, so I have my three shirts, and I'm gonna send them to the printer. All right. Ed, thanks so much for meeting with us today and showing us inside the mind of a graphic designer. It was so cool to see, you know, my original concept come to life on this t-shirt. Definitely, no worries. We hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know if you have any questions in the comment section below and make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this.